the Washington Institute for Faith, Vocation, and Culture has a pretty simple thesis that faith shapes vocation, which shapes culture. So wherever you are in the world and whoever you are in the world, that our deepest beliefs about life shape the way that we live life, and that has consequence for life, for blessing or for curse. Um, so whether we're Hindus or whether we're animists or Maoists or evolution materialists or whether we're Christians, that our deepest convictions about the way the world is um, shape how we live in the world, and that has consequence for history, for, for culture. So that faith shapes vocation, which shapes culture, uh, for blessing or for curse. Uh, we began um, maybe 10 years ago, and we had a conversation with the Lilly Endowment, actually, that had given uh, $2 million grants to about 90 institutions of higher education across America. Uh, some very notably, you know, working from theological traditions like Covenant College and some less so like Duke University. Uh, but Catholics and Calvinists, Baptists and Anabaptists, Methodists and Lutherans all had access to these $2 million grants. And they were essentially saying to, you know, the Covenant College world, uh, we are going to, you know, bless you with $2 million to develop a curricular vision that explores the meaning of vocation within the Reformed tradition, as they did to this to Notre Dame University as they did to you know, Pepperdine University and Baylor University and, and on and on. Um, and after a few years of that, I got a call from the Lilly, the project director uh, saying, we see your name on how this money is used uh, sometimes and do you have any ideas about it? And I said, well, I have one idea and that is that the years after college are harder years. They're more difficult years because if the Notre Dame student you know, leaves South Bend and moves to Chicago and at best, he can find a job, but didn't really want a job. He wanted a vocation. Uh, that's disappointing, actually, to a 23-year-old. But I argued it was even worse and made some ways more difficult if they couldn't find a, a parish, uh, a Catholic parish, where the preaching and praying reflected this vision of vocation, which they'd been thinking about as undergraduates. The same, of course, would be true for a covenant student at Lookout Mountain moving down to Chattanooga or moving to Atlanta. And if you couldn't find a congregation which actually preached and prayed as if this vocation stuff mattered to God and the world, why would you keep believing it? You wouldn't, really, after a while. And the Lily folks said, we think probably you're right about that. And we hadn't thought about that. And so we began to talk together and finally they gave a grant which we used to begin the Washington Institute.